Several weeks ago, when I heard of the death of the Buddhist monk Tit Han, I had a deep feeling of grief. Grief for someone that I had never met, but who'd changed my life so very deeply in ways that were maybe small and indetectable from the outside. Since the early 90s, when I was given a book called Being Peace by a friend, I've, I've, I can't even count the number of times that I have calmed myself by practicing the mindful breathing techniques that it recommends, um, or stood at the sink doing dishes, reminding myself that this too is a wonderful moment. <laughs> And the many walks that I've taken when I imagined my feet kissing the earth with each step. As Thich Nhat Hanh says, peace is every step. Thai, as his students called him, meaning beloved teacher, was, was so instrumental in bringing Buddhist ideas about mindfulness uh, to places all over the world, places where Buddhism wasn't always known. How many of us have some of those little books of his or have seen them uh, or maybe given them to family and friends? So as I was thinking today about what I wanted to say about interbeing, this, this idea that we are all interconnected and that um, the boundaries of ourselves don't actually um, contain us, I, I start to fall apart with my ideas. The, the utter simplicity with which Thich Nhat Hanh expressed these ideas through nature imagery and, and his connections uh, that he makes to our own bodies and our own breathing, this makes it hard to find a way to speak about his ideas that feels authentic and fresh and, and like he was. And so I've decided to use some of his own nature imagery uh, to bring in his ideas about interbeing in a more embodied way, kind of like the, the pebble meditation that we just did together. And then uh, hopefully that will communicate some of his very sophisticated ideas about interbeing. Now, I could explain all of that to you in some dry academic way, uh, this concept of interbeing, that we don't have a separate identity from everything and everyone around us. This, this, this concept of interbeing that was at the core of Thich Nhat Hanh's teaching and philosophy and way of living. I could do that, but I think it will be more fun the way that I'm going to do it. Now, this idea of interbeing, I should say, was important enough to Thich Nhat Hanh that he named the monastic order that he founded the Order of Interbeing. So this really was a core philosophy of his. And it is deeply related, deeply related to our Unitarian Universalist seventh principle, respect for the interdependent web of existence of which we are a part. And I want to highlight before we go on uh, that it is actually the, the words of the principle are the interdependent web of existence, right? And though we say it in many ways, um, that is the one that is the official, um, the official statement. And, and so we need to look at that and remember that um, though we tend to talk about the interdependent web of life as if it is the creatures of the earth who are alive, um, the flora and the fauna, it's actually the interdependent web of existence so that the rocks and the earth and the oceans and the skies are part of that interdependent web as well. So having just gone through the 
uh, the pebble meditation, I want to use some of the images to talk about Thich Nhat Hanh's life and teachings. Thich Nhat Hanh was a flower. Dr. Clarissa Pinkola Estes, another wonderful writer, called him the walking lotus of our planet. Now, a lotus, a lotus flower, draws its beauty and its color and its vibrancy from the common mud of existence. And, and Tai had that humility as well as that kind of creativity. He offered his heart up and out fully. He opened out to the world with no withholding. His words, his presence had a freshness and an immediacy that could speak to the heart of every person's common experiences. Children, Westerners, Buddhists and non-Buddhists alike. His walking meditation introduced a beautiful ritual for learning to love the earth that we live upon with our feet. He embraced the joy of the present moment without reserve, and he reminded us too that smiling can be a sacred act. And so as we are together on this eve of St. Valentine's Day to celebrate love, I invite all of us to honor Ty, who died just a few weeks ago, by thinking about the ways that we can open our hearts to others to ourselves and to our earth. And now I'm going to read some of Thich Nhat Hanh's words to help describe the, the concept of interbeing. And I think you'll find it very interesting. He said, if you are a poet, you will see clearly that there is a cloud floating in this sheet of paper. You see, without a cloud, there will be no rain. Without rain, the trees cannot grow. And without trees, we cannot make paper. The cloud is essential for this paper to exist. If the cloud is not here, the sheet of paper cannot be here either. So, we can say that the cloud and the paper inter are. Interbeing is a word that's not in the dictionary yet, but if we combine the prefix inter with the verb to be, then we have a new verb, interbe. Without a cloud and the sheet of paper, without a cloud, the sheet of paper could not exist the cloud and the sheet of paper inter are. Now, if we look into this sheet of paper even more deeply, we can see that the sunshine is in it. If the sunshine is not there, the forest cannot grow. In fact, nothing can grow. Even we cannot grow without sunshine. And so we know that the sunshine is also in this sheet of paper. The paper and the sunshine inter are. And if we continue to look, we can also see the logger who cut the tree and brought it to the mill to be transformed into paper. And we can see the wheat. We know the logger cannot exist without his daily bread or her daily bread or their daily bread. And therefore, the wheat that became their bread is also in this sheet of paper. And the logger's parents are in it too. When we look in this way, we see that without all of these things, this sheet of paper cannot exist. Looking even more deeply, we can see we are in it too. This is not difficult to see because when we look at a sheet of paper, the sheet of paper is part of our perception. Your mind is in here and mine also. Mine is all over the page. <laughs> so
So we can say that everything is in here with this sheet of paper. You cannot point out one thing that is not here. Space, time, the earth, the rain, the minerals, in the soil, the sunshine, the cloud, the river, the heat. Everything coexists with this sheet of paper. That is why I think the word interbe should be in the dictionary. To be is to interbe. You cannot just be yourself alone. You have to interbe with every other thing. This sheet of paper is because everyone else is. Now suppose we try to, turn, to return one of these elements to its source. Suppose we return the sunshine to the sun. Do you think this sheet of paper will be possible? No. Without the sunshine, nothing can be. And if we return the logger to their parents, then we have no sheet of paper either. The fact is, this paper is made up of only non-paper elements. And if we return those non-paper elements to their sources, then there can be no paper at all. Without non-paper elements, like mind, lager, sunshine, so on, there will be no paper. As thin as this sheet of paper is, it contains everything in the universe in it. Thich Nhat Hanh was also a mountain. Martin Luther King Jr. called him an apostle of peace and nonviolence and nominated him for a Nobel Peace Prize. At a time when Buddhists were taught to be apolitical, Thay taught that non-attachment, non-attachment to outcomes, did not mean withdrawing into a cloister and abandoning one's work for justice. He opposed the Vietnam War. He put his reputation and his body in solidarity with those who were being harmed. He dissolved that false barrier that had been created in Buddhism and is often created in religion and many of the other worlds, uh, including Christianity and Unitarian Universalism sometimes, uh, between the contemplative life and a dedication to human rights and justice. He showed how a person can be fully immersed in an ancient tradition and yet committed to working for positive change. Engaged Buddhism, his, his new iteration of Buddhism, empowered other religious leaders to expand their roles and speak out for justice and for peace. And so I'm going to now read a poem that was written by Thich Nhat Hanh, um, and it was written um, about refugees uh, who were being turned back, uh, who were coming, arriving in boats and being turned back um, and not allowed to, um, not allowed to um, leave their country uh, that they were fleeing from. This is called, Please Call Me By My True Names. Do not say that I'll depart tomorrow. Even today, I'm still arriving. Look deeply. Every second I am arriving. To be a bud on a spring branch, to be a tiny bird with still fragile wings, learning to sing in my new nest, to be a caterpillar in the heart of a flower, to be a jewel hiding itself in a stone. I still arrive in order to laugh and cry, to fear and to hope. The rhythm of my heart is the birth and death of all that are alive. I am the mayfly metamorphosing on the surface of the river, and I am the bird which, when spring comes, arrives in time to eat the mayfly. I am the frog swimming happily in the clear water of a pond, and I am the grass snake 
that silently feeds itself upon the frog. I am the child in Uganda, all skin and bones, my legs as thin as bamboo sticks, and I am the arms merchant selling deadly weapons to Uganda. I am the 12-year-old girl refugee on a small boat who throws herself into the ocean after being raped by a sea pirate. And I am the pirate, my heart not yet capable of seeing and loving. I am a member of the Politburo with plenty of power in my hands. And I am the man who has to pay his debt of blood to my people, dying slowly in a forced labor camp. My joy is like the spring, so warm it makes flowers bloom all over the earth. My pain is like a river of tears, so vast it fills the four oceans. Please call me by my true names so I can hear all my cries and laughter all at once. So I can see that my joy and pain are one. Please call me by my true names so I can wake up and so the door of my heart can be left open, the door of compassion. Thich Nhat Hanh was a clear pool of water. Fully immersed in the discipline of Buddhism from the age of 16, when he entered the monastery, he learned to become a calming presence. He offered these teachings to all of us through his writings. He showed in each moment of his life how we can find peace and equanimity through simple techniques that require no specialized arcane knowledge, no expensive equipment, no unique abilities, no particular theology. We too can calm our minds while walking, while washing dishes, while simply breathing in and out. Each time we become distracted, we can remind ourselves, I am alive. This is a wonderful moment. In doing so, we can become those clear pools that can reflect reality once again. Now, Thich Nhat Hanh brought what he called the miracle of mindfulness to the West, along with other teachers of mindfulness, of course, and this spawned an entire mindfulness industry, which we all, I'm sure, have interfaced with. Um, but when we become overwhelmed by the, the many maze, the maze of offerings by this mindfulness industry, we're so lucky to be able to return to the simplicity of Thich Nhat Hanh's teachings. We can simply breathe in and breathe out. We can smile. We can know that peace is every step. And I want to recall the words of another of our favorite Unitarian Universalist hymns, uh, Meditation on Breathing, which says, when I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I'll breathe out love. Thich Nhat Hanh was spaciousness itself. Thich Nhat Hanh was a dissolver of barriers. His life embodied interbeing, a kind of wholeness and healing that he brought to the world by building bridges between that which had become alienated, between the mind and the heart, between uh, the mind and heart and the body. He was spaciousness itself, a dissolver of barriers between the mind and the heart and the body, between the East and the West, 
between Buddhism and other faiths, between the monastic and the activist, between the individual and the cosmos. In this way, he, he embodied interbeing. Now, sadly for us, he has built a new bridge. He has crossed that bridge between life and death. But even, even here, he embodied the concept of interbeing because as he spoke of his own death, he was still teaching the dissolving of barriers. He said to his followers that if they wanted to make a shrine of his ashes, they should just make a plaque that said, I am not in here. And then in case people didn't get it, they, they could have a second plaque that would read, I am not out there either. And in case people were still confused, he suggested that a third plaque could read, I may be found in your way of breathing and walking. He also said that his followers could think of him as a cloud. Even when the cloud is not there, he said, it continues as snow or rain. It is impossible for a cloud to die. It can become rain or ice, but it cannot become nothing. The cloud does not need to have a soul in order to continue. There's no beginning and no there will be a dissolution of this body, but that does not mean my death. I will continue always. The principle of interbeing means we are not truly born and we do not truly die. And so in conclusion of this, this Valentine's Day love letter to one of my great teachers, Thich Nhat Hanh, I invite you to remember, remember that you are a flower. When you're, uh, when you're sad, you can remember that you were born for joy and creativity and beauty and love. I invite you to remember that you are a mountain. When you're struggling, you can offer strength and solidarity to yourself and when others around you are marginalized or their humanity is being denied or minimized you can use your strength your solidity to fight for their rights i invite you to see that you are a pool of clear water practice whatever techniques allow you to keep your calm spirit your equanimity, so that you may reflect reality to others around you and not inner turbulence. When you feel stirred up, you can center yourself, maybe with pebble meditation or some other practice that you have, and you can respond from a place of balance. I invite you to become as all space, as air itself, to know the freedom of that spaciousness and to remember that you're connected to all things through the sacred and interdependent web of all existence. May all of our interbeing be joyful. And may we remember Thich Nhat Hanh always. May it be so.
live our lives in the freshness and the presence of a flower, the strength and the courage of the mountain, the calm clarity of still water, and in harmony with all of the cosmos. So that when the time comes for us to die, each of us is as a cloud that brings cooling rain and mist, never really dissolving, but giving life to each new seed that grows. In this way, we too will go on, nurturing all life as our continuation, our bodies, our spirits, our love, a gift to each new generation on the earth. Then, till then, each day, in each tender moment that we are given, may we continue to learn and practice being together, being community, being peace. Amen. Thank you.